Hi, it's Kurt from here at City Campus. And now welcome to our Friday devotional. We made it through this week. Probably wondered if you would at some point. I know I did. And, um, but uh, God knows that he's got his plan in place. and I'm not too worried about it. Um, we continue to talk about false teachers and we're gonna do that for today. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week at least thinking about might end up uh, talking about a couple more. Uh, we'll see if that happens. Um, but uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it next week a little bit. I like to start things on Monday and I don't want to end on Wednesday. So that's probably where, where we're coming with that, I think. Um, today we're talking about an important subject, watching out for false teachers. And that job, you know, often falls to people like me who preach at a church. And uh, it falls to Kyle, it falls to Dave Hastings, it falls to other people who are um, preachers. But even though they call me a pastor, you know, I guess that's my role. Um, the elders at church <coughs> are the true pastors, uh, the leaders, people who are mature in the faith. And for some of you, that's you. So you need to be watching for um, false teaching every day. Let's uh, go to our study because the Bible speaks to this in some detail. Okay, so that's where we're at. We're continuing to talk about false teaching. We're today talking about it's a pastor's role to watch for false teaching. But I'll say it's your role too. Um, so Acts 20, and the book of Acts, you know, a lot of people don't like doctrine from Acts, but I love that book. It's my favorite book. Probably in the, I don't know, I'm, I'm pretty partial to Ephesians. But um, Acts 20, Acts is a really important book. And Paul the Apostle has spent, you know, the last 20 or 25 years of his life traveling on mission trips. And he's kind of coming back from his last mission trip. And he stops at a church that he had founded much earlier in the, uh, in the time period, right? And, and this happens to be the Ephesian church. And he prays, with, he, he brings out the leaders of the church, people that are called the elders. Now, this word in the New Testament is a word that we kind of would, you'd probably hear, if you knew, if you heard it, you probably would know it. It's presbytero. It's where the word Presbyterian comes from, but it just means the leaders, the leaders of the church, the overseers of the church. And he brings them out and he prays with them, talks with them and everything. And then as he's leaving them, he gives them this specific charge in Acts 20, 28 through 30. So guard yourself and God's people. Feed and shepherd God's flock, his church purchased with his own blood, over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you as leaders. I know that false teachers like vicious wolves will come in amongst you after I leave, not sparing the flock. Even some men from your own group will rise up and distort the truth in order to draw a following. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm not overly interested in drawing a following for any reason other than bringing people to Jesus. But that's why we keep a close eye out for false teaching. You know, even inside our church, I'm, I'm always really careful when people are having Bible studies or people are having, you know, things like that. I want to know, you know. If someone's reading a book and they go, oh, look at this book. And I look at it and go, I wouldn't read that. Um, you know, if you ever hear me say that, it's because I'm not satisfied with the, with the teacher that's teaching it. The adversary wants us to leave Jesus. He's never going to leave you or me, but we can leave him. The Bible says that. Uh, it's my job, so I'm always watching. You can watch too. And here's how you watch. Compare everything you hear, everything you see to the Bible. You got you to gotta compare everything you hear to the Bible. And if you do that, not what you think's in the Bible, not what you've heard in the Bible, what's in the Bible, you'll be able to stop false teaching, or at least for you, you'll stop false teaching. And then come tell me and I'll go, hmm, let's see if that's really true. And Because that's the first thing I'm going to do is compare what you're telling me against what's in the Bible. And by the way, if you don't know what's in the Bible, we can help you with that. Our little passage this week is Jeremiah 14, 14. It really applies here. 
It says, then the Lord says, the prophet, these prophets are telling lies in my name. I didn't send them or tell them to speak. I didn't give any messages. They prophesy of visions and revelations they never seen or heard. They speak foolishness made up in their own lying hearts. You see, false teaching is invasive. Sometimes it's little false teaching. Sometimes it's big. But uh, we as leaders, me as a leader, you as people in the congregation, some of you watching this are leaders, you also need to watch for false teaching daily. Making sure that you're not using a book to teach that's from a false teacher, even if they just do a little false teaching, it's false teacher, in my opinion. And um, you could probably resolve all that by just teaching from the Bible. That's what I think is the best anyway. But, um, but there are some great teachers out there. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Uh, we uh, we want to avoid any false teaching and follow you. Just following you. That's what we want to do. And thank you for your word that helps us to do that. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Guys, have a great weekend. I'll invite you like I do on most Fridays. So we have our services at 930 at City Campus. That's at 1710 East 10th and Jeff. It's inside Maxwell's House of Music. And uh, we get to be in there in the morning on Sunday. So uh, we'll have our service at 930 on Sunday. Uh, if you need a you need to get there somehow that you don't you don't have a ride or whatever. Well, just drop me a message either here or in the, um, the Facebook chat where this will also be linked, and I'll, we'll find a way to get you there. And if you don't have a church home, we'd love to have you. If you do have a church home, you want to come check us out, visit. We have an interesting ministry, and we'd love to have you uh, participate in it. So uh, we'll uh, talk to you soon, and I hope to get a chance to meet you sometime. We'll talk to you later.